Welcome back, everyone, for round 15 of RM Fantasy S Experts. I am Chase. I'm Christian. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget also, if you want to, you can listen to it in podcast form, all the major platforms. Yep, everywhere you need it. So, And do not forget, you guys know that we give a lot of great stats in this episode for the race that's upcoming. But if you want to give them more stats, you can read the blog. We'll have a link after the video. That way, if you want to take some more time, get some good stats, give it a read. Yeah, a lot more there. So, Absolutely. Well, Christian, round 14. It's come and gone, Nashville. Crashville. Crash. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. I mean, my gosh. Well, let's get right into it. This is a race recap from Nashville. All right, Christian. Nashville has come and gone, as you called it, Crashville. That's right. Oh, but before we get into the race recap, really quickly, if you see these mugs that Christian and I have right now, these are the Rocky Mountain Tumblers. Keep your drinks cold or hot. Coming Mom's up later up. at the end of the show, we have an offer code where you can get these for 99 cents this weekend, people. So stick around and get that offer code. That's right. Christian, tell me about this weekend. A <laughs> lot of carnage, a lot of things happening. Tomac wins the LCQ and then comes back to win the main. We yeah. haven't seen that for a long time. His bike was smoking on the last lap of the LCQ. We were and starting then it was to think he wouldn't the main make event. it. Yeah, something was going on. Sketching me out, but I don't remember the last time <clears> that happened. So Tomac, back to his, you know, his real form. He yeah. Even said after the race, just felt like him again, which he said that a lot. So take it for yeah, what it means. I don't kind know. of a lot happened for him to win too. Yeah, so. but Blake Baggett coming on strong second. Past Webb, I had them flipped, so Eesh. It hurt me fantasy-wise, but yeah, what do you do? it hurt a lot of us, including me. Cooper Webb, third. Dean Wilson, congrats to him. him another top five. Zach Osborne round out the top yep, five. Cracks his top five. Cole Seeley, your wild card pick from last week. That I changed. <laughs> I put Osborne there. So it bit us there, uh, yeah, no doubt. But anyway, pretty wild race, though. A couple highlights that I like. <clears throat> Obviously, it's just the carnage. Yeah. I was so upset when Savachi crashed, because not only does it suck for him, but then he took Roxon out. Oh, it was crazy. Which... Totally just fumbled my picks. <laughs> this flies over the berm, can't get back up. It's <laughs> scan. It was crazy. Tries to jump through the whoops, it bites him. He's lucky he didn't get hurt worse, I think, there. Yeah, it but, could have been bad. Yeah. But uh, anyways, it was a good racing, though. I enjoyed the racing, lots of cool passes, lots of things going on. Yep, I like the track, so yeah, it was this, awesome. this week looks a lot like it, but we'll get into that. Now let's talk about points, though. What do we got? Me and you... Uh, well, Gosh. let's get into us and Jim and Daniel real quick. Me and you did horrible. We both we, got 15 points. Gosh. Daniel got 31, Jim got 33, so they, they closed in Rivalry on us. Rivalry is closing <laughs> yeah. in. We 27-point lead with three rounds to I go. No, we're, we're not feeling good about it. We're not looking too good right now, but what do you do? User stats, though, <clears throat> 25% uh, or 25 average points for the week, so mm -hmm. not too bad. Nobody got top five picks right, or the, not five picks right, so no perfect scores or mm -hmm. five picks. Yep. And only 55 had four picks right. Just Only go to 55 show you. total people yeah. out of 77 Jeez. or 8,000. Well, so. that's what happened when Marv crashes out and then Savachi takes out Roxon. Yep. Wow. Tomac, only 11.38% had him to win. It's, people were finally <laughs> catching on, and then what does he do? It's like we said, if you take him out of first, he's, he's going to win. win. So that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have him in first place, so I didn't feel too bad about it. the lowest he'd been picked to win all year, and of course he wins. So. Oh, my gosh. And then, what, 43.9% have bag in the top five, but only 1.9% had him in second. Yeah, so if you did that, kudos to you. And I, th I think it's kind of a trend that we're going to see with Cooper Webb these last few rounds. You notice how he... Pretty much just kind of surrender the position of Baggett, or maybe not, doesn't fight back as hard. No, I think a podium and he's happy right now. And Absolutely. He's got a big lead. Even a so. top five and he's happy right now. Mm -hmm. All right. And then Seeley and Savachi both had 20% of players picked them to be in the wild card. Yeah, so I heard him there. Not too bad. <clears throat> Let's talk injuries, though. Oop. Unfortunately, we got some with some attrition going on. So Ronnie Stewart, Tyler Enticknap. Gnarly crash. Yeah, that yeah. was bad. Brayton, Reed, Cole Martinez, your boy, Aaron Plessinger, <laughs> Vince Freezy, Jason Anderson. Malcolm Stewart, Benny Bloss, Savachi is questionable. He DNF'd. He didn't get back on but after he tipped Justin over. Barsha, they've announced he is done for the rest of the year when it comes to Supercross. Damn. Oh, that's too bad. Well, there it is. That is your race recap. But now let's talk about it because we're going to Denver for the very first time. Some interesting things to talk about. So here it is. This is Track Trends. Head to Denver, the Mile High Stadium. They don't, it's not just a pretty nickname, it's a mile high. I mean, 5,200 feet, so they're going to be dealing with elevation. Earlier in the week, they've had snow. 5,280, that's like a mile exactly, or is it like a few yeah. feet off? It's got to be pretty it's close. It's so. almost a mile exactly, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. <laughs> so it's going to be cold. Very um, cold. The track layout looks a lot like Nashville, so hopefully we don't see as many crashes as we did in Nashville, but hopefully we see, you know, tight yeah. racing like there. Long start straights, football stadium, good size whoops. Other than that. 
pretty much all I know. No stats so. to go off of, but a couple <laughs> yep. things. It is going to be super high elevation. The next closest stadium, obviously, was Salt Lake. That's at 4,200 feet. And stick around because coming up later on, Christian Craig, he is calling in. He raced 450s last year in Salt Lake. Took fourth. Took fourth. He knows what he's doing. So there. we're going to actually ask him, does the elevation and the cold weather affect a rider? And that's, is that something to maybe watch for this weekend? So we'll get some pretty cool insight on that. But mm -hmm. other than that, Denver, I'm excited for it. <laughs> yep, oh, also, we saw snow all week. Yeah. As of just this week, there was snow all over the track. So it could be a rough, ruddy, very technical track. Oh, yeah, you're going to want to check. Uh, race Weather's looking live. good for the weekend. Just cold. Cold. So watch qualifying. That's mm -hmm. going to be huge, I think, to see what how the track is shaping up. But what we need to talk about, though, is how Tomac and Muskan are both tied for second, 21 points yep. behind. And Webb. where to put them. Where to put them. Here it is. This is Top Contenders. All right. So for this week's Top Contenders, we have on the table the top four riders in the championship, and we have ranked them in the best average finish. First to fourth over the rounds. last three rounds. Yep. Correct. So Cooper Webb and Eli Tomek are actually tied for the best average finish at 2.7. Marv, average finish of three. And then Roxon, we've seen it though, just bad luck. It's just bad luck. But his, his average finish is 6.7. His speed 7. is up there all of them, no doubt. What's interesting though is when you look at Tomac and Webb, they might have the, the same average finish, but Tomac's average start is three places behind Webb. Yeah. And his qualifying is five spots ahead of Webb, so. Oh, my gosh. And they've all four led laps over the last three rounds, too. But what's so crazy been... is that Marv has led 43 laps out of, and Tomax led 18, Cooper 24, and Marv still only has one win in the last three rounds. Oh, I know. It's, it's intense battling for the wins, so. Goodness gracious. But anyway, so if we talk about it, let's get some other stats here. So Cooper Webb, he has a 21-point lead. What does that mean for the championship? It means... If he gains three points this weekend and in New Jersey over Tomac and Muskan, mm -hmm. championship is wrapped up before Vegas. I hope that doesn't happen. I mean, pretty much, But yeah. mathematically, he can wrap it up before Vegas. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. What do we have for Tomac to help him out this weekend? Let's see. Tomac, he hasn't qualified or finished worse than sixth in the last seven rounds. He hasn't taken back-to-back -back podiums, though, this year, which is... Are you serious? ...kind of troubling, yeah. Wow. Denver is his hometown race, so you got to... I think he'll have that extra motivation there. Um, and he's, on average, finished one spot better than where he's qualified on the West. So watch right. that. His last five finishes, one, four, three, four, one. All right. Interesting. Now we get to Marvin Muskan. He, to me, I've just been making more mistakes this year than I've ever seen. I'm just starting to call him Messy Marv. <laughs> I mean, he's all I over I just think it's because he's pushing so hard to beat Cooper that it forces him to make mistakes. He's out of his comfort zone. Clearly. And he doesn't like to bang bars, which Cooper seems to be comfortable doing. <laughs> but if we look at Muskan, he hasn't missed the top five back-to-back -to -back rounds this year. Mm -hmm. So that's telling you he's probably going to be the top five, especially because last week he probably would have won, in my opinion. Yeah. Him or Roxanne, but he crashed really quick. And then he has the most amount of laps led in the West Coast, standard rounds of 27. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Third best average finish on the West, 3.6. And his last five overall finishes on the West are 2-1, 2, one, two, two, two. I mean, that pretty much locked it in that I'm putting him second place for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he always does it. And then we get to Ken Roxon. My pick to win this weekend. He's going to do it. He's, he will win a race before I mean, the I year I won't be started. mad if he does. All right, but if we look at it, he's qualified in the, in first in the last two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. So the dude's actually stepped up his game when it comes to qualifying. So I think it's it's got to be Ken this weekend. The guy's starts are dialed. He's riding good. What do you think? I mean, his last five finishes are just crazy to me. 8-8-2-10-8. Eight, eight, yeah, but we it's all know that come doesn't back mean that doesn't. No, it's I'm not just, a good representation of how he's been. He's riding. getting bad luck. The law of averages. He's got to get a good break sooner or later. And his average finish on the West Coast is three. Mm -hmm. So, and his starts have been his starts have been on point. So, yep. I see Rock's going to take the win this weekend. That's my prediction. I think you got to ride with Marvin second. We'll talk a little bit more about it. But those are the top four contenders again, ranked in order the best average finish. Now let's talk about. What's happening a lot this year? Now that we have that the attrition, riders are getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about weekly spoilers of riders that could crack the top five. The top contenders, a lot easier picks. The spoilers, I feel like this week is the really hard part of your picks. So we've ranked, you know, the top five riders in our opinion that could spoil the top five this week in the order we like them. Blake Baggett, Dean Wilson, Zach Osborne, Cole Sealy, and Joey Savacci. Yep. So let's get us started with Although Blake I Baggett. do feel like Baggett's well, he's, he's on the cusp. He, yeah, he's on he's like for me it's 
I don't know, man. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> Thank you. <for> that. <laughs> Did you like that insight? That, that was, that was good. pretty I good, huh? That. All right, dude. <laughs> What do you got? Baggett, he took second last week. Third in Salt Lake last season, so elevation's that. not going to affect him. Finished in the top five in rounds 15 through 17 last year, so he could heat up towards the end of the year. Has the fifth best average finish in the West Coast standard rounds this year. On average, has finished one spot better than quali- his qualifying position in West Coast standard rounds. He hasn't taken back-to-back podiums this year, so he could do that this week. And his last five finishes are 4, 2, 7, 8, and 2. The hardest part about Baggett is his qualifying never reflects how he does in the main. No. So you never feel confident after you see him you know, around 10th or worse <laughs> in a qualifier, and then he shows up and just crushes it in the main yeah, but you, you don't just feel, got it you have to put that fear aside when it comes to el chupacabra yeah. you don't feel confident until like the second turn and he's right there like, oh baggage like, yeah, there good thing i put him in there probably gonna podium okay yeah. what about wilson dean wilson he ha- has had two top five finishes in the last two rounds so he's he's on fire right now he hasn't qualified worse than third in the last three rounds so speed all around um he hasn't finished the same or one spot different than where he started in the last five main event gate drops. So that tells me his stamina's there. He's not fading at all. Right. Um, and his last five finishes, 11, 9, 6, 3, and 4. So all solid. right. Now we get to Zach Osborne. So Zach has been improving each round this year. The man, I think, is due for a podium by the end of the year if he gets the start. He's got to be the most underrated dude right now. Yeah. So Least talked you about. You look at his last five finishes, six, eight, or six, seven, eight, six, five. So... He is getting better. What's funny, though, statistically, he does have the best starting average on the West, which is two, because he's only had one gate drop on the West West Coast, Coast started second. (laughs) But Osborne, he is there week in and week out. Mm -hmm. I think he just had to work a little bit on his stamina, that race pace. It's building back, so I would not be surprised to see him crack the top five again. No. Okay? My boy, Cole Seeley. (laughs) Cole Seeley. He got the wild card last week in seventh. Yep. Um, His best average, or his best overall finish of the year is fifth on the west coast um he hasn't started worse than eighth in the last five gate drops so he's getting up there yeah he's finished in the top 10 in six of the 14 rounds this season and his average west coast finish is 10.6 one spot worse than his east coast average west coast finish is 3.3 spots from his average west coast start so he usually fades about three spots after the start Interesting. All right. And the last rider that we have up here, this is Joey Savacci. So we all saw Joey. Again, I think he's questionable for this weekend. Make sure you're watching qualifying. But injured his shoulder in last week's race. But if we're talking about stats here, last four starts and standard rounds are 3, 8, 2, 5. So the man's starting up front. Mm -hmm. He's in shape. But I just feel like with that banged up shoulder, a lot more questionable for me, which is why we ranked him last. It's like a healthy shoulder. He might be, you know, up Up here behind Baggett. But hurt shoulder, we got to move him back. All right, well, there they are. Those are some of our weekly spoilers for this week. What do you guys think? I think Baggett, a little more, pick. yeah, solid pick for your top five. Just not sure where yet, but we'll find out. The rest of these guys, you decide who's going to make it into your top five. But now, wild card this week is 14th place. 14th. Let's talk about it. Here it is. It's wild card watch. So, 14th for the wild card. If you're in a heated rivalry with your friends playing, you need to get this right. And mm-hmm. we got four riders on the table that we think are good picks. We got Ben LeMay, Kyle Chisholm, Justin Hill, Tyler Bowers. Mm-hmm. What do you got on? Well, I know you're thinking about LeMay, so let's talk about it. Average finish on the year for 2019 is 16.6. He's finished 14th in two of the last three rounds. And his last five finishes, 18, 21, 14, 14, 12. He's gone 13 to 15th five times this year. He's in that range. And Kyle Chisholm consistent. is right there with him. Yep. His average finish. 16.2. Yep. He's finished 13th in the last in two of the last three rounds, and he's placed between 13th and 15th in five rounds this season himself. So. All right. Well, now, now, we, now we get to Hill. Oh, my gosh. Justin There's Hill. So much to say. So much. Yeah, nothing, nothing good here. So he is placed between 13th and 15th six times this year. So he is currently... I don't Probably know. Probably the best pick for 14. I don't know, what I don't know what's going on with this guy. But his last five finishes are 7, 14, 12, 11, and then last week, DNF. So he's all over the map. Do you not know what to do with the guy? How about Tyler Bowers? Tyler Bowers, I feel like, is the most consistent dude. Like, he's going to be between a certain range every race. So just like after A2, he's placed somewhere between 10th and 16th every race. All right. His um, average his, finish is 13. Yep, average finish 13. So he's, he's better than 14th, but, you know, something might happen. You know he's going to be around there. Last five finishes, 16, 13, 10, 12, 10. 
So he's right. been doing a lot better, but I you think never he's a little know. bit higher up than 14th. But yeah. and then some names that are in the conversation here. You got Brees, Adam Entiknat. That'd be so cool if he got it. That'd yeah. be his best finish of all time. Mm-hmm. And then Politelli. And you know, if Coley Cole was around still, oh you know, I'd be gosh. talking about putting him in there. So. We don't need another yellow bike in the 14th <laughs> range. All right. Well, there you have it. That is the wild card watch. Now let's get him on the phone, Christian Craig, to give us some insight on Denver this weekend. This is between two berms with Christian Craig. All right, so we have him on the phone. This is Between Two Berms with Christian Craig. Christian, thanks for calling in. How are you doing? I'm good. How about you guys? Oh, just talking fantasy. Yep, hanging in there. <laughs> nice. Now, Christian, everyone here, we know you got injured even before the Supercross season started. You tried to come back, just couldn't make it happen. How's the injury going, and when can fans expect you to be back at the racetrack? Yeah, it was, it's been a pretty frustrating season. Um, was scheduled to race West Coast, obviously, and then three weeks before the before A1, I, I broke my thumb, and um, it's kind of been just a frustrating, you know, I've had two surgeries since then, um, tried to come back from Minneapolis to race the East Coast, and obviously that didn't go that well, and then, um, and it's been pretty rough, but I'm, I'm back riding now, and I'm actually going to try to make these last two rounds, um, to try to get some gate drops, nice. and oh, cool. uh, get ready for outdoors also, so... Pretty wild about Forkner, though. Guy was pushing it in practice, and I think it finally bit him. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I mean, we've all seen it. He's how many crashes now in practice. Well, um, didn't he say he would purposely ride to the limit of crashing to know what he like what his limit was? I think I heard him say that before. And <laughs> like, that's not a very good strategy if you I ask just me. I wouldn't have put him back out there for the second <laughs> qualifying. I don't know what was going yeah. on there, but yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously it, it bit him. Um, it didn't even seem like he hit his his leg or whatever he was complaining about in the first crash. So, um, yeah, I think I mean, you definitely don't contact. want to see someone that's been that dominant go out that way. No, it's Hopefully a bummer. He can he can uh, make these last two rounds and fight for for the championship. Yeah, I think it'd be so cool if he were able to do that. That'd be mm-hmm. awesome. But I know your buddy Chase Sexton, he's he's hungry right now. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy because he's he hasn't you know he's never won before, but he could end up winning this title. So. uh you know, it's, it's something that we all work towards, um, yep. is be in this position that he's in right now. So, um, you know, it couldn't be any happier for him. So, I mean, yeah. he's been consistent, and that's that's the name of the game, I guess. Yeah, no, the, the fact is you have to be at every round if you want to be a champion. Well, especially so, on 250s. Exactly, yep. So, I mean, Chase is uh, it's riding really good, and he's right there um, to his first win. And then, you know, here he could, he's in a position to win a championship now, too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, Christian, if – you know, for people that are watching or maybe listening, those that might not know yet, so your really good friend and trainer that trains you, Ken Rocks and Chase Sexton, Blake Savage, you know, he had a pretty bad injury this year when he was riding, I think, I believe some Supercross down in Mesquite. Um, yeah. You were at the Rocky Mountain dealership in St. George for one of the rounds of Supercross mm-hmm. there to support Blake. Uh, kind of tell us about Blake and, you know, give some people some ideas of how they can help support him during this, you know, pretty rough time for him. Yeah, um, it was a pretty crazy situation. Um, it was the Monday after Phoenix Supercross. Um, I got a call from actually from Ken. You know, he was with Blake, and he was like, "Hey, uh, you know, Blake's Blake's hurt. We don't know the extent yet, so I didn't even know what to to expect." And then obviously, a couple of days later, I heard how bad it was. And um, man, it's been tough on 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 me for sure. Um, just to see someone go through that, and then um, you know, someone that's so close. You know, I spend almost every day with him in the gym, at the track, and Mm -hmm. um, he's become more than just a trainer for me. So, uh, yeah, like I said, just really tough. And then I've I've just been visiting him as much as I can and um, went and helped out at his uh, little fundraiser at the Rocky Mountain dealership in Utah. And then, um, man, I've just been doing everything I can to help uh, support his road to recovery. Um, You know, just stuff like that. It's uh, I have a a good feeling that he's going to be walking here in a couple months or even sooner. So. That'd be awesome. Um, he's, he's a guy that never gives up, so I think, uh, you know, they, they challenge the right guy in this situation. Absolutely. Now, mm-hmm. is, there a, is there a GoFundMe account, anything like that, set up for Blake? I think it's mainly just uh, RoadToRecovery.com. Okay. Um, they've they stepped <laughs> up huge. They're uh, doing a, a mountain bike ride next week down here in California, and I'm going to be attending that also. So, Sweet. I mean, awesome. uh, I mean, it's just cool, cool to see how many people um, care about Blake 
and uh, man, I hope he just can get back to normal here soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, we're all cheering for him. So Christian's yeah. going to ask you now about this round coming up in Denver. Yeah, since we're heading to Denver, which seems like it might be a snowy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know they're going to be talking about the elevation. As someone like you who took fourth in the 450 class in Salt Lake last year, how how much does that really affect you? What are you really you know looking to change up for that type of round? Um, well, first off, I mean, 250s have to worry about their bikes get being slower. Um, that's kind of the huge change. Um, your bike just can't get out of corners as much as you're used to. So mm-hmm. you got to adapt to that pretty fast. And then, um, yeah, obviously the, the mile high city, so it's going to be harder to breathe. Um, last year in Utah, um, I, I got fourth and, um, I would say it was definitely harder to breathe in that 20 minute main compared to any of the other twenties. So, hmm. It's just something you got to put in your head from the start is to take, remember to take deep breaths and don't let yourself get caught up on, on not breathing because then you can't recover. So um, I would say that's like kind of one of my big pointers for all the riders is just remember to breathe. All right. That's good. Now, so I guess it's, if you haven't looked at the temperature yet, it's supposed to be like 45 for a high. It's a little bit early to race, but it's going to get below 40 degrees while these guys are actually out there on the gate. It, does cold weather have any effect on you or, or riders, do you think, or is it just making sure you get really warm before the gate drop? Yeah, I mean, it does have an effect. I, I feel like when it's cold out, your your bike feels stiffer. Um, you, your body feels stiffer, so yeah. <laughs> um, you just got to remember to keep, you know, staying warm and uh, warm up really well before, and then, I mean, by lap two or three, you're going to be sweating, so it's just all about, you know, being ready for those first couple laps, so... Um, I mean, after a while, it, the, the adrenaline takes over and, and the weather doesn't matter too much. But um, I would say sit on the gate. There's going to be some, some cold riders for sure. <laughs> right on. Now, championship-wise, Christian, Tomac, Muscan. I mean, Tomac and Muscan are 21 po- points behind Webb right now. Uh, which one of those two do you think has the better chance to catch Webb in the last you know few rounds? I'd have to give it to Musquin. Um just because he's a great starter. He starts right up front. Um, I mean, other than Houston, he hasn't made a ton of mistakes, and he's shown that he can win. So um, it's a big question mark this year with Tomac. Obviously, he's got the speed, and he was expected to pretty much dominate this series, but yeah. obviously it's uh, it's went kind of the other way for him. Um, I mean, you never know with, with Tomac, though. He can go out and just win these last three. Um, <laughs> but I would say with the – I would put my money on, on Musquin to uh, to close this championship, if anything. All right. Well, here's <laughs> two more questions then. Well, I think Tomac won. You know why? Because when James Stewart does an interview and says you should be dominating, you should <laughs> probably go out and dominate, yeah, that right? That's extra motivation. <laughs> extra for motivation. Him, <laughs> and then Roxon, dude, I had him to win this last weekend, and then Savachi, unfortunately, went down, takes him out. You think Roxon wins around before the end of the year? I think so, and I think his best chances will be this weekend, um, especially after how frustrated it was to to see he was having a perfect night. And, I mean, <laughs> you could just watch on TV the whoop speed compared to anybody oh, no. else. Like, Insane. He was off there was nobody whoops, on his level. And, and that was kind of the the race. It's like if you're fast in those whoops, you're going to yep. end up being you know, the yeah. winner. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I'm pulling for him. He's, he's a good friend of mine, and – I mean, it's crazy that he hasn't won yet just because of, you know, he's put himself in those positions, and obviously it's just he's had some crashes and, and stuff happen. But um, I would I would say this weekend is his weekend. All right, and I actually gonna, agree with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting Roxon back that. in first again. Yep. All right, Christian, last question, helping all those fantasy players that are out there. Give us your podium, because my theory is right now, Webb, he ain't going to battle too hard up front if he's not feeling it. I think that proved it last week. Yeah, last week he kind of let Baggett and Tomac by. He's not too worried about it. So give us your podium for this weekend in Denver. I'd have to go Roxon, Moose Can, uh, Webb. And I, I'd say Webb puts up a fight to be on the podium still. I don't see him pushing over. Um, I don't think he's that kind of rider to where he's got this points cushion that he's just going to ride around in fifth place. I think he gets a good start and he stays up front and, and finishes on the podium. Yeah. All right. I think I think if Muscan is there, I don't like. I think <laughs> I know they're teammates, but we I still see feel like there's other. that rivalry between those yeah. two, and they do not <clears throat> like to let each other pass. So no. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> we've seen that obviously. Perfect for the fans, though. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, hey Christian, thanks so much for calling in. We appreciate it. Good luck on your recovery, and we should see you then in a couple of weekends. Good thing you got that weekend off. 
Yep. Give you yeah, an extra week yeah, to recover. I need it. So, uh, no, it's been good. Thank you guys for having me. All right, man. Hey, appreciate it. And good luck when we see you. Yep. Thanks. All right. See ya. Well, there he is, Christian Craig. The best name in the pits. I like that guy. So. You're biased. <laughs> no, it's cool, though. He talked about the temperature. So, riders going to have to stay warm. It's going to be really cold in Denver. Yeah, I mean, that's. Altitude-wise, for the riders that aren't in tip-top shape, which honestly, you know, those top dudes, they are. So mm -hmm. I don't think it'll be have too much of a... They'll talk about the power on the bike, though. They always they'll, do. They'll talk so. about it, but these guys, fitness-wise, I think they're going to be just fine. But remember mm -hmm. also, like Christian was talking about, when it comes to Blake Savage, you want to help out, road recovery. Blake's a great guy, met him in St. George, so anything you can do to help is going to be greatly appreciated. And like mm -hmm. Christian said, Roxon, he has him slated for the win. I agree. I like it. But we're going to find out what the rest of our picks are next. You ready? Yep. Let's lock them in. Time to lock them in. Dude, 27 point lead is all we have over Jim and Daniel. I know. We have slowly been bleeding a little bit. It's too close. Ugh. Here we go. My picks for the weekend. Ken Roxon. But here's the deal, though. Watch qualifying. Here's what I think of. Nobody's ridden this track yet. They don't know what the dirt's going to be like. It could be really soft and really ruddy. Bike setup could be a little bit off, so I am going to watch qualifying very closely. If Roxon is qualifying up there around that number one spot again, he's going to go to the first place. But right now, I still have him slotted to win. Marvin Muscan, second. The lock. Locked. Eli Tomac, third. Mm -hmm. Just can't trust the dude starts. Yep. Now I've got Blake Baggett right there. Cooper Webb in fifth. I still think he doesn't put up as big of a fight, especially if things are going a little haywire. And then I've got... Who did you have? Kyle Chisholm? Yeah, you put LeMay up there. Get Chisholm there up there. He's go. my wild card. All right, there you go. My locked in. What do you have? I like it. Um, I'm sticking with Rocks in the win, too. Muscan in second. He just seems like he always ends up, always ends up there. Eli, though, I just he's too inconsistent for me. I'm putting Webb back in third. Uh, Tomac fourth. Baggett fifth. And then my wild card, Ben LeMay. Hmm. Could be a good I feel like it's us. pretty safe for both of us. Almost time for team tactics. Well, we tried to that try to catch Jim happens. and Daniel here. We got to do something. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it there. Locked in. Jim and Daniel, we are coming for them. What do you guys think? What's going to happen this week in Denver? I know a lot of people, especially after Tomac just dominated, are going to be putting him in first place because it's his home race. I would just say look at qualifying. But then again, Tomac didn't even qualify that great last week. And when most people pick him, he doesn't win. <laughs> we all know that. True so. story. Well, there you have it. They are locked in. Now let's talk about why you want to be playing RM Fantasy SX with Christian and I. Here it is. This is the prize recap. So today, Friday and Saturday, the offer code um, is RM Tumblr. Pick yourself up one of these for a dollar each. Yeah, a dollar each. I don't know how you can get more out of a buck. They almost work too good. <laughs> they, if you don't put ice in there with your coffee yeah. or whatever you're drinking, it stays hot. Like five long. hours later, I'm still burning my mouth <laughs> on that thing. But all right, make what sure we you get that up. All right, round 15 weekly prizes. Uh, first place is going to get MSR NXT gear set, Mav4 helmet, and Supercross 2, the video game. Second place, Troy Lee Designs SE4 composite helmet. Third place, Fly Racing F2 Carbon MIPS helmet. Then other prizes going down from Pro Honda, Pirelli, 100% goggles, uh, Fox, a Cherubis, Bell, Dirt Tricks, Sprockets, and 90 Rocky Mountain gift cards. 90 chance to win. Remember, you don't have to be signed. If you sign up this weekend even, you still have a chance to win weekly prizes. Yep. But let's talk about those people that are diehards that have been there since day one mm -hmm. who are still in the fight. Here it is, top 10 grand prizes. First, Race Prep KTM 450 SXF. Second place, KTM 250 SXF. We fly those people here to Utah, show them around a good yeah. time, and we give them their bikes. Third place, you get a uh, Moab trip, Red Rock getaway, plus a generator. Uh, fourth place, trip to Monster Energy Cup. That's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Dunlop Brock Glover Legend Ride, Fly Racing Gear and Casual Package, Milestone Video Game, Supercross 2, The Game, Console, and 4K TV. Eighth place, Motion Pro Tools, coming in some Tusk Impact Wheel Set, and then Oakley Goggles and Sunglasses. A lot up for grabs. A lot up for grabs. Now, remember, go to armfantasysx.com, create your free account, join up to play, like we said earlier, free, an absolute blast. You will never cheer so hard for Supercross. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. And the best part is all you got to do is just pick your top five for the week plus a wild card and then just talk some smack with your friends. Yep. It's that easy. So simple. Just now, do it. Calendar notification. Make sure to head to the website, click on the calendar notification so you don't get caught off guard, not getting your picks in time. And also join up our group, RM Fantasy SX Rivals. See how you stack up to me and Chase. And other than that, 
That's pretty much it. There you go. Well, I am Chase. I'm Christian. We'll see you next week.